Hey everybody, this is uh, Daniel here coming in from the uh, editor's desk as I'm getting ready to finish doing the uh, episode here. Um, two things, so I forgot to refresh the Facebook question thread on my screen, so I would like to just do a quick apology out there to Nathan F. Um, we did not answer your question about um, chest clock timers uh, we'll try to pick that up next episode and uh, Ian we did forget to answer which rings we've been building with right now but um, as a reminder this episode was recorded before the map rules changes article came out um, so just keep that in mind uh, we'll be doing a map uh, map rules article change map change rules article thing we'll be recording that podcast soon early in the week so Enjoy this episode of uh, Alex and I uh, chatting about some stuff. Welcome to Click Stop, brought to you by Lucky Dice Cafe out of Huntsville, Alabama. Check them out at luckydicecafe.com. And now for your hosts, Daniel Powell, Jason Alvey, Alex Coons, and Tyler Speeds. Hey everybody, welcome to Clickstoff today. This is your host Daniel Powell speaking. Just want to let everybody know Clickstoff is brought to you by Trollandtoad.com, world's largest hero clicks retailer. Find hero clicks new and old on Trollandtoad.com and use coupon code Clickstoff for 5% off your hero clicks order. Merchant and pre order items do not apply. If you like what you're hearing today on Clickstoff, check us out Patreon.com forward slash Clickstoff. Dollar and above gets entered into our monthly giveaways. $5 and above gets entered into our Discord channel for HeroClick strategy and tactics discussion. Um, joining me tonight is the singularity that is known as Alex Coos. Here we are. We're just two regular old silver smiths here. Oh, man. Hammering so. away, trying to build the best silver team, I guess, is the plan. Silver well, smiths. so... Yes and no, right? Um, so <laughs> the yes is we have a feeling that some mechanics are going to work the same. The problem or the uh, calculus equation before us is the new rules, right? Yeah, um, we really we really debated um, the reason why it's peek behind the curtain. The reason why it's just you and me is because we've debated about you know doing an episode we really wanted to do an episode this week but then before we even got the rules article we wanted to do an episode and then we got the rules article on monday and then they put the little teaser in there you know next week it's gonna i think they said next week it's about maps and then the, the one after is about powers change powers and abilities or something so it's yeah. like it's like oh great it's like so we could i guess talk about the one article and you know, subsequently, like you said, the Silver Age stuff could also change depending on how the rules change. So it's kind of one of those really a lot of things up in up in the air. But right. you know, um, we got new terrain to talk about, and we we did have we we did talk in our last uh, episode about how we're going to talk about Silver Age because we didn't really react to Howard's announcement that much. Right. So. Yeah. So. Um... Right, new rules are coming, right? So the, the big caveat, right, on everything in this episode is um, it could change, right? Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. You know, uh, perplex could be different. Uh, sidestep could be different. I mean, all these things are up in the air, right? Um, we can we can all cross our fingers and hope that smoke cloud is different. Right, right, <laughs> right. <laughs> that's, my, that's my hope. Uh, how about this? Uh, I don't know if it's a question. Like, with the hint that powers are changing a little bit, right? Because they they did put that in the right upcoming thing. What would what is your number one? Like, oh man, I hope they changed this about powers and ability. Uh, mostly just the the pack on the pack. Um. So, um, my funny one that I was going to say. 
um, was I hope that uh, Kenny's influence uh, influence sidestep to be three squares instead of two. <laughs> um, thus, That's a bold one. Thus rendering that uh, uh, tarot card useless. Um, <laughs> that was my comical one, um, which is it's like an old joke at this point. It is literally a nine-year-old joke this year um, mm -hmm. that tells you how fast time is flying. Um, cause Kenny won in 2014. So, um, uh, by the way, can you get to the Wiz Kids website right now or is it just my crappy internet? I am on WizKids.com. You mean for the rules update article? Yeah, I went to WizKids.com and it's just not loading for me. But Here, I'll send you, buddy, the, the link. Well, I got the link. Yeah, anyway, so that was my, um, that was my funny guess. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I... I think if I had to guess something that I would like to see, I think, and I don't know, and I, and I don't think this is going to happen because just me talking about it is uh, complex enough. I think mm -hmm. Outwit is too powerful. Um, How so? Um, like... A 20-point outwitter being able to take down a 300-point piece that doesn't have protected. That's fair. So... Uh, you want, because when we do our reviews of figures, I mean, one of the first things we look at for a figure that's over 100 points is, do they have some sort of outwit protection? Right. Yeah, so I, I, I could see that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that would be like what I would like to see. Um, but just talking it out, right? Um, so we already know one spoiler, per se. We don't know exactly. Uh, but um, Kenny let out on uh, Coffee and Clicks that support was changing. Um, mm -hmm. And then in our Facebook group chat for the, for the Facebook page... Um, he said, I can't say much, but he can say that support takes up, um, like, four lines on the pack or whatever. Right? Mm -hmm. It's a very wordy power. Expect it to be um, simplified. So Yeah, that makes sense. That'll be cool. Um, but I, there's, I, not, there's not a lot of things in the game that you have to roll 2d6. And it's not an attack. Right. So, in saying that, right, like, I think my fix for Outwit would make it wordier, which goes mm. against the seemingly, the, 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 the direction that these rules changes are taking. So, unless they're, uh, unless they're willing to add that because they're removing the wordiness from support so they're like okay we can add more to outwit now <laughs> yeah 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 who knows <laughs> we've who got knows. The, we've got the room on the pack now right even though they change they change the layout of the pack i feel like every freaking set right and choose what they want to add on and take off so it was an interesting thing that it looks like the wild can or the and i don't want to say the wild conjecture but it looks like the the scientist keyword got dropped from world's finest because of a formatting error formatting as in like they like um like what would you call it like um the printing error a printing or... error like you know how you would design it in like photoshop and mm -hmm. if you make the text too big or wrong like it it goes out of the text uh yeah the, yeah. the text rectangle um because there's a comma there and um so I, it looked like it got dropped. I doubt anything will be fixed about it, but that's something I read on Facebook earlier this week. Yeah, uh, that that were that's very familiar. Of uh, who is it? Iron Lad. You know the Iron Lad right. of Avengers Forever, where the spacing on it, they split up. I think it's Iron Lad where they yeah, split young, up young young and, Avengers. Yeah, and it looks like it's young on one line, but if you look at the second line by itself, it just says Avengers, uh, comma. Yeah, we had a big issue with that at Team Sealed at the Champion Clicks because we, we, you know, when you're in the middle of building teams, you're just going by and you're just, you know, reading keywords. You're like, who goes here? So we built a team with Iron Lad on it. And we're like, all right, you're Avengers. 
And then I looked at it a second time. Like people started packing up. We're getting ready to go. I was like, oh crap. <laughs> like this is, I forgot. We had talked about it like the day before. This is Young Avengers. This is not Avengers. Right. So we like quickly threw them off and threw like a Bucky or something on that would have fit. But um, right. It's those. It's those little things. So I so but, I say that and like I hope that they're. I hope they um, have taken a lot of time in the Photoshop um, <laughs> or whatever they use. Right. If it's a designer or whatever fancy program they use to make the pack to. Uh, grammatically check it over and design check it over a kajillion times um um you know yeah so it's not me, that it's not that like a world's finest or iron lad is just this unexcusable thing but like the pack's pretty important so i, I oh hope, yeah i really hope they've taken the time to to check all that over yeah if i were to look at the pack right now and say what are the powers on there that are just so overwhelmingly unperforming like uh not performing to expectations at all like there's some on there where i'm like i never use it um smoke cloud is probably one unless it's free everyone has always talked about smoke cloud where it basically needs to be kind of a power six maybe just free one or free two uh, something like that makes more sense but it's also one of those wordier powers it's five lines on some packs yeah. for smoke cloud yeah, um, you know what that that would be. Yeah, you know what that's that's a that's a valid answer. Um, another one that I could think of support was one that it's it's one that you're like, oh, it'd be great to have, but it's so hard to pull off because I think we talked about it in the last episode before. For support to work, you really got to have defend because you're really your support pieces are hitting usually with like a ten, yeah. maybe eleven, and you don't really want to perplex it up. And it's like, okay, uh, so I got to hit a 20 <laughs> with my 10 to support? Not happening. So right. I hope they do change it because that, that doesn't make sense. Um, another one that I think they probably need to get rid of and completely change. I think there's room on the pack to completely make a new power is they need to absolutely ditch Earthbound Neutralized. 100 percent like the fact that it's a well it is the only it's the only power that is an anti-power right right so i mean but like figures have traded traded in their special i mean you just can't get rid of it at this point right because figures have that power labeled on the card like you can't call it something else Sure. I, I think, I we think, we had a bunch of we had a bunch of WWE figures that don't have powers anymore, right? No, they <laughs> have their 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 colors are circles instead of squares or whatever. Sure, yes. They have a they have a it's a definitive different shape, but like you just like you couldn't call the pink slot in defense, you know, it's invincible, right? You can't just change that to something else, right? That messes up way too much. But yeah, I agree earthbound should be changed to something else. That I would... think at some point if you're if you're changing up the game, you're trying to make it more cohesive, it's an empty power slot at this point that you could do something with. Now what you could do that's a good question. I have no idea what you could do with another right. speed power that that we're missing, um, unless you think of it like a flurry for ranged. But that is too powerful. People have talked about all the time that it's mm -hmm. too powerful. But that would be the only thing on the quick that I could think of. But Earthbound Neutralize should just be like a condition, like immobile. Yeah. Immobile's basically that anyway. I feel like you can't use improved stuff, but it's. Like, you could just make it a condition and just say it's a key phrase. You've been earthbound neutralized. And so you can't use... Because we got, we got tarot cards that don't... Yeah. That says you can't use these abilities. They don't say this character can use earthbound neutralize or something. They just say you can't use these improved Yeah, I would, like, I would like it to maybe... I think if anything, I would mm -hmm. like it to see, see it change to nimble. Oh, like the WDE one, uh, WWE yeah, the where one, it's just one? Uh, there was one where you like placed three squares or something and or moved three squares and made an attack or something. Yeah. Or you um, just moved three squares. I don't know, like maybe just where you, you just placed within three squares or something. I don't know. 
just some sort of other movement ability, unique movement ability besides sidestep. Yeah. I mean, we've all noticed. I mean, sidestep has taken such a big hit lately because they're not giving it to anybody. Right. Like, n- nobody in Batman has it except for, like, one or two, right? I, like, I don't I think, think so. I, anybody has sidestep. Right. Um, which is just a sign of, hey, we realize this is a very strong power. That's why when you said your joke suggestion of making it three, I'm like, well, pfft. the only people that have it, I think, are like the mystery ink people. Like, I think they're literally the only ones that do. Uh, let me look. Three, there's three people, common Fred, common Daphne, common Velma, yeah. and then Shaggy da- uh, Daphne from the... the uh, starter the other set starter yeah. and robin from the starter that's it yeah because they're cutting down because sidestep is a very powerful power mm-hmm. but it, it'll be interesting i mean they did hint at it that it's this isn't like a um ww not ww uh wonder woman 80 this isn't going to be that update was focused on streamlining things this is a smaller slate that'll that's focused on increasing things so kind of they're backpedaling on some kind of to bring it back to the rules update they're backpedaling on you know fall damage not back damage they realized it's it's still good some people still like it it's still important to the game because there's some characters that yeah it, it, bad some, to have it, it. it adds some complexity back to the game that we lost in in 2021 for sure and then they they're adding the terrain stuff. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah. So I to... think I so I'm rereading the article here again. So objects. So I think the bold part here, objects will be considered a type of terrain marker, and players may place terrain markers, including objects blocking water, hindering, and elevated on the map during setup. Each player may include three terrain markers on their build, and in any combination between objects, the standard one by one square terrain markers. Or the new markers we're about to discuss. Um, so, oh, I, you know, I didn't read that earlier this week, and me neither. So you can just include three squares of blocking. I guess. Yeah. Oh my! So that. Um... <laughs> oh man! Like uh, you could just. You... <laughs> oh, I hope there's some like placement rules um, engaged with this. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, it has to be outside. Well, the placement rules is you during setup, each player may place three terrain markers anywhere on the map outside of their starting areas. Is that does that say that in the article? Yeah, it's right after the part you just read. Um. <laughs> oh, Which, uh, I, I'm I'm laughing because I'm sorry. I like I, I sometimes I get in a fit of laughing. Um, but um, <laughs> you want to know what slows somebody down? Blocking up their starting area. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like <laughs> it's like they forgot uh, old negative zone exists. <laughs> Well, I guess, all right, so I assume with these terrain rules, well, I mean, terrain does open things up, right? I think the one part that's not clear here that we're going to have to get some, like, this, it may be that's the map update, right? We're supposed to be getting the impact of maps. So maybe yeah. they're like, hey, you're placing out a bunch of blocking now. Certain maps are just going to have to go. Like, they just, they are not functional yeah. to these new terrain markers. Yeah, may- they're, maybe they're, so, but, like, yeah, so that's just my bit of conjecture at the moment. Um, but, like, it's almost impossible to to gauge. Um, like, I, I understand that some of these things are likely to retire in June. Um, but I'm just looking at HC Maps. Like, Wonder Woman's Barn. You place mm-hmm. three squares of blocking from the barn to, like, whatever that is on the left side in front of the barn. You only have one square. Um to to keep blocked off if they don't have flyers so i guess the biggest question so i guess it it, so the 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 order of operations is first player puts down their their pieces and their objects 
and objects. So they go mm -hmm. first with objects as well. So they pick map and then put down their objects as well, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then second reacts. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I guess that does suck. Yeah. So. Right. Yeah, that does. That does indeed. Hopefully, all right. I'm, I'm going to hold so. out. Ho I'm yeah. going to hold out hope because Article Four comprehensive rules of miscellaneous changes. I hope they change that and be like, okay, second player, you get to put objects first. So that way you can counter that, oh, I'm going to block you in by saying, all right, I've, I've got a terrain marker that opens doorways, whatever, you know? It's so right. I can, yeah. I but, see, Dan, I see you over there with three blocking. I know I could put this little pathway in front of me. Yeah. Um, I mean, you're almost going to have to, right? I mean, yeah. And, and I'm going to have like, to be a change there. Obviously, that's the most egregious. Like, I mean, I mean but it, yeah. So, I mean, there's got to be some rules, right? So, like, Latveria. That map, you mm -hmm. you can block them in their starting area if they don't fly. A hundred percent. I mean, I mean, this sucks, but at the same time, though, I do like this change, like being able to put terrain markers, because I've always hated that concept of oh, you've got a a team like an Agatha team, where you you need hindering. Okay, I go first because I won, so I, I'm choosing this map that has zero hindering on it. Sucks for you. No, your I, whole team is yeah, bad now. Yeah, there's there's like a, I, yeah there's a lot of plus sides for sure. But uh, I get what you say. The extreme cases where it's like, oh well, I could take you to this one place and just barrier you in. No, I mean I'm just looking like so Marvel Studios Disney Plus, um, the downtown map. You, mm -hmm. you can also, so like one side of it is wide open and the other side of it is closed in. So you could close yourself in if they pick the open side. Mm -hmm. um, but it is terrain markers and there are risks with that, which right. they went in. They, they did, right? But so here's the thing. So we can talk about that for sure. Um, you can now pick up a terrain marker um, and use it to unless make it, uh, except, unless, except, unless it's debris smoke and water right? and use it to make attacks is your opponent hidden themselves behind barrier have your attacker rip out those blocking markers and use it to augment their attacks but how do you know how much extra damage that marker deals and then we've got this thing that you can throw so the first you got this new three square thing this three so you'll see a window on the bottom of it that shows the object values first is lightning bolt giant that shows the range this object can be thrown with a range terrain action as well as the giant reach x value a character can use this while making a close terrain action so they get giant reach two for this. Okay, so uh, they get filing cabinet thing that they they have here. Yeah, so you can throw it for giant reach to it, and then next is the damage symbol, which is the damage the object deals um, when, thrown, when thrown, and then the damage value modifier. So mm -hmm. plus two damage is coming back for from terrain. Yeah, um, I assume there's probably one that's plus three. I would assume so. Let's hope. I mean, that'd be cool. Um, I, I I said. By the way, I would just like to repeat what I said when we found this out at Worlds. Are you ready? Con le terrain markers. I mean, it's not crazy. We got the uh, plastic man. Yeah. Con le things. So. Plastic man. Con le things. Uh, slop exclusive tarot cards. Um, Connelly terrain markers uh, would not be a stretch. Yeah, and it wouldn't. Uh, well, and not even just Connelly's. What would make a ton of sense? And it's the it's what they did with the, when they did Clicks FX, right? Didn't they have a separate pack of just here's a bunch of Clicks FX yeah. X mm -hmm. bases? Would not surprise me if they just did. Here's a little pack uh, for this set, uh, not Spider Man, but a future set. Here's your token pack, and here's your terrain pack, and here's five terrain markers. 10 mm -hmm. bucks, 15 bucks, whatever. The 3D print, maybe they're 3D printed ones and they're like $20. Cause remember they make D and D minis and they make a lot of other stuff too. So it is not hard for them to say, Hey, 
this light post that we just made for D&D, let's make that a terrain marker in Hero Clicks. Mm -hmm. Sell that in a yeah. separate pack. And we would eat that up, right? Like, I would I, love I think something so. extra. Right. Like, something yeah. that's like, hey, this adds to the game. I know I can get it separately if I need it. Sure, throw me extra accessories and that kind of things that that impact the game but is readily accessible for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I would love that. Yeah, I tend to agree. I mean, you know, obviously they would have to do something unique as well. Uh, yeah, to some extent, course. right? Like you need like a an extra special value in there or some unique thing that it does. But there's a lot to play with. So. Yeah. There is. There's a lot of values to, between those three those three things, right? Oh yeah, and the final I don't remember. If you oh, said the, the, the final, final one the is final. the minimum damage value a character must have in order to target this terrain with a close range destroy action. Yep. It's cool. It's a neat wrinkle that adds something to the game that I don't think is just going to be crazy. You know what I mean? Like it's not like tarot cards added to the game was is pretty nutty and we got used to it and it's fun this <clears throat> adds another wrinkle but i just don't think it's going to be like op oppressive you know what i mean like it's going to add hey now i can add hint like a uh, elevated terrain marker that's cool like so you put me on a bad map all right cool i could put down this terrain marker now to give me a little bit of something to control what you're putting me at it's like how special terrain was before except all the special terrain we got was blocking. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, I, I dig I, it. I, 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 I am uh, excited, um, but I really hope that this comes with some sort of rules change to either maps or the uh, placement rules. Because uh, I've just been while you've been talking there, I've just been looking through HC maps here, and I'm like. <laughs> um <laughs> uh, like other world castle you can yeah you can, there's a three square like i'm just looking for three squares you know or two square openings and like you can change the now i understand that you can pick up square you know i can understand you can destroy them i can understand you can pick them up i can understand you use you know i understand you can do all of that right but saying that you are f forcing their decision making and that's pretty huge i think yeah they're, they're gonna have to like clearly there's gonna have to be some rules changes tied to this not just that but to other things like they're gonna have to change ultimately a little bit of how movement works when it comes to these because are they going to be picked up like objects so you go adjacent to them and you pick them up and then you can move into their square because it is a blocking terrain marker at that point right, right. so is it now treated as an object you know in that sense of can you only when pick I up can adjacent? you only pick up one right like if it, right. yeah are you an object can you only pick up one you know can you place one pick one up and put one down in the same movement um, yeah, and they're they're making it very clear you're gonna be able to go into the square that terrain marker exists. Yeah, which is not a thing you could do with destroy blocking movement, but with super strength you pick it up as you go through, I guess. So yeah, they they're gonna have to have wording where it's like okay, you're limited to one, um, unless you're just go through all of them. And there's a lot that you know uh, that remain. I'm excited. I can't wait to see what next week has. The week after, I kind of wish they didn't do it in four weeks but i guess yeah. the thing i guess that's one thing we could look forward to if we really think about it right like this week is the 23rd next week is the 30th and the 6th and the 13th that puts us the 13th of february would not surprise me if the 20th is when we get scott porter for spider-man right because spider-man's in march like leading this up to where it's like hey rules updates here's the first preview the one after like that makes sense to me from a PR standpoint of hey we've got everything lined up through February now yeah so, yeah which by the way we did get some rules questions answered last night and um, I just I just I have that tab open from uh, just looking at it today and um, I just an interesting note so they have the view count on the the their forum post um, mm -hmm. 
and I would just like to say I asked a question about Galactus and got it answered. It was pretty cool. Um, nice. It's nice. all I don't know. It's just always cool to see your name on the world's forum. Mm-hmm. But they got views count, right? So like, mm-hmm. um, you know, there's this one about um, a grass cutter sword, five hundred and thirty one views, and then you've got like prisoner of planet doom it's got five thousand views uh and then you've got the thread about galactus thirteen thousand views and then on top of that even more excitingly you have scarab fourteen thousand views on the rules forum about scarab now how many replies no, I mean, well, there's only one. So no, so the okay, rule, okay. it's it's the rules form is very heavily moderated, right? So right, no, no. So the the reason I mentioned replies is because if it has a reply, that usually means there was multiple questions. Like Galactus yeah. has five replies, so that means it probably got some views. Right. The first one was back in October 2020, so it's got views for a since while. Then, but Sc- Scarab only has like one reply or something. Right. Um, that it's like okay. <laughs> Right. I, I, and the for those that are curious, the rules changes for this go around. Not really anything surprising. Right. Um, the only one I, I guess I misread Prime Wonder Woman. You did. Uh, but I kind of, when I read it, I was like, yeah, that makes sense. Um, because basically she can't save herself. It makes full sense why it can't when you read it because her thing happens right. after resolutions. Um, I miss the after resolutions part. But. Yeah. Yeah. I, I got that question a lot. Um, I am a little sad they didn't post my question. Still waiting on that, WizKids, about whether the uh, Shi'ar flag object is a standard object or not. Yeah, well, uh, who knows? I've been I've been told I've been told by some people, not from WizKids, that that won't ever get answered. They'll just let they'll just like Emperor Gladiator. They'll just make him retire early because of that one question. Maybe <laughs> who knows. Um, so, I mean, I think that pretty much covers the rules article, right? Um, that we know of yet, right? Yeah, for, I think for we today, were for this one for today at least, right? Yeah, well, I'm, I was talking with the guys there earlier. I'm hoping we could do something for on Monday to have kind of either a live feed or record afterwards to be like, okay, because we did this last time with the Wonder Woman 80, right. we had. The, all those rules updates back to back and we did live feeds uh, live streams that night or that evening to kind of mm-hmm. react talk to people about it and i think that got really a lot of good response because people like to talk about big changes and i think this change we it was kind of a big change but we knew terrain was coming so depending on how it goes next week like how the um what the change is to maps if it's just a hey, we're getting rid of some of the maps then we may not, but if it's a big enough change with maps, then we we might do a, yeah. a live stream that night. Yeah, it all it all just depends. Um, and then do a tier maker on maps, right? <laughs> yeah, it all just depends on what the how you know it. You know, this rules article day we're just recording about it because it wasn't like spicy, right? The twenty twenty one rule changes were spicy. Um, you know, well. I- I, I say that it is spicy, but it's not spicy because we've been eating the spice. Like, we've had the spicy food for the past three months. Yeah, that's true. So like, that's true. So it's like, oh, here's a little bit more spice. Okay, we've been, you know, munching on these peppers for a while now. So mm. it's great. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, we're, you know, yeah, it, we're used to it. We're, we're ready for it to come out at this point. Right. Um, so... That we say this first part to say um, all of this Silver Age stuff could change, and we're going to get this big rules change right before the cup, essentially, with about a mm-hmm. month to digest it. So that's going to be super exciting. Um, and, you know, I think one thing that looks to be about the same, so I mean, is Mad Jim can equip Colossals and non-standard characters. Uh, I mean, as of right now, they did say comprehensive changes. They yeah. they did. So, But as of right now, I mean, um, Caleb Reddick asked, who's the best retail in silver and what items should Mad, Gim, Mad Jim give them? Um, and uh, Sam did say Old Surter with the Power Gem. I would add to that 
also give Surtur the Joker gas container. Um, yeah, we shouldn't start that question off if we're talking about Silver Age, because that's just going to be turning people off where they're like, yeah, that does not sound fun. I don't want to play Silver Age. Cause uh, well, we do need to, we, you know, we do need to talk. No, about no, there's no, 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 no. There is no hiding how powerful Silver Age is anymore because um, they got rid of ID cards and I realize that I am in the minority of that, the people that liked ID cards. I, mm -hmm. I, I'm well aware of that. I mean, because Jackson said... You know, I, Jackson said, I'm loving Silver now and his questions in here. And um, and then someone else said something about ID cards, too. Um, uh, Amato Romero said, have your feelings on ID cards changed? Um, so, like, no. No. Um, no, Alex. So you, mm -hmm. a, a, as far as we know right now, unless, barring any changes, old Surter with a power gem, with the Joker's gas canister, hiding in some corner of some barriered up map, can come retail you with a 14 attack, 6 damage, with Battle Fury, cutting through all of your defenses. Yeah, that's that's a little a little gross. Just a just a tiny bit, right? So now, uh, I mean, we could tra we, we mean, could transition that uh, that into Brad Broyles' question: Why uh, should retaliation be in silver? So, I, do you think if they remove? Okay, so the other thing that they add here is: What if Silver Age was just silver and not including modern? Um, I I think that. It, that makes silver extremely it, to where if you know y'all talking about you know you're talking about how like this Surter thing may be unattractive to newer players wanting to play silver it completely turns them off if they have to go out and find old stuff that they don't have anymore like yeah, I get that. Yeah, I hadn't thought about it that way. Right. I think that that is a terrible idea for silver. Now, I, I personally, I don't care. I own the complete Bronze Age collection. You know, back to you know as far back as Majestic's Bronze Age goes, minus about a dozen figures or so. Um, so I certainly have a complete Silver Age collection minus a few so, figures. So but, I guess so I, that so it it doesn't matter to me personally. I think that is a terrible idea to attract new new players and talent to the to the okay. Silver Age tournaments. Okay, so I'll piggyback off of that, and this is something businesses often do. I, I do things where we we have these kind of brainstorming. Silver Age. What is the customer of Silver Age? Who is your target audience when it comes to Silver Age? Having a Silver Age for, for format, is it to attract new Heroclix players? Or is it something to have older Heroclix players come back? Like, if you're Wiz Kids and you're like, we got Silver Age, who are you targeting with Silver Age? I, I think that it should be all of the above. I think Silver in and of itself, you know, attracts older players to come back because it allows them to use their older stuff that is mm -hmm. still very powerful and uh, but it also has newer players um, you know uh, newer players need to be able to come in and play their modern stuff which is still just as powerful in the format as well yeah I can see that um, I think I get the reason why. Like, first off, if you told me just in a vacuum, do you like the idea of Silver Age just being silver and exclude modern? I like the concept a lot, just as a in a in in and of itself. Like, throw out building, bring in new players in, or throw out the fact that you have to like find older figures. Like, in in a vacuum, I like the concept because. It is a format that will continue to grow. 
modern ha- uh, rotation happens and you know okay the set is now transitioning from modern to silver it is now legal and silver so silver now like you're now anticipating two things come rotation rotation happens you're like okay i'm anticipating like, finally scarab is going away in modern and then finally scarab is coming into silver age like now i get to have like get excited because you're no july mm-hmm. i've got like six sets now coming into this format i get to build for it because you know probably what it is in advance most of it so i like that idea but what you're saying is absolutely true it isn't fostering of newer players to say okay these sets you can't find well i mean they've probably got a lot of these sets on their website still right like they've still got x uh dark phoenix on their website but regardless you have to go find these figures now um what about a meet in the middle like this might be a little too complicated what if you had certain modern sets that were legal like on death's door you could say like the final year of modern eligibility those figures are silver age legal yeah i i don't know i mean that sounds more complicated i mean you know, my, my goal is to always, I, I think that Heroclix is a small enough community as it is, right? I mean, mm-hmm. you know, in Florida, right, there was 58 players and what, 40 of them were the same people that we saw at Nationals, 30 yeah. thereabouts, you know, I mm-hmm. mean, obviously we saw pretty much all 40 all almost 50 of them at worlds um you know yeah. so we've got to can every major tournament with major prizing and things that are a destination like you know i, I take rock cup as a destination right you know the uh, the appeal of rock cup you know just kind of expanding my thoughts there right you get to play sealed with scott porter um you get to play in a team event um and i don't know they've i don't alex you probably know but i'm assuming that did howard say it was pretty much going to be the same schedule as last year uh i think he said in his announcement i think i think it uh i don't know if he said exactly which days or what i know that that question was asked right i know there's the day for scott porter i know there's um, right. Well, so like, two, so so like, if you talk about like Rock Cup being a destination, a lot like Florida was a destination event for us, right? You know, you you have to take off at least two days, maybe even three. Um, you know, you get the Thursday night Tracy Brock event. Friday, you get to play with Scott Porter. Saturday, you get to play with your teammates, your buddies. Sunday, you play singles. Right. That's what it was mm-hmm. last year. You know, assuming that it's close to that again, right? All of those events need to be attractive to new players. And I don't think that cutting silver off and making it silver only um, accomplishes that goal. Everything needs to be welcoming to new players. Anything that you can think of with hero clicks at a major level needs to have some sort of, needs to be tailored to, to welcoming them i'm not saying you got to make it easy for them i'm not saying you go easy on them right you're there to win you're there to compete but they should feel welcome right we make people feel welcome you know we give them high fives and talk to them and you know love to talk to new players and all that good stuff but from a playing perspective right they need to be able to use what they got in some perspective or if let's say there's a new plate and you say there's a new venue in the area popping up right you know some buddies got together they got their store owner involved you know they've bought a bunch of bricks the past six months they need to be able to use that stuff in silver they see the rock cup right they see scott porter's going to be there they see alex coos from clicks off is going to be there they want to show up and see those folks you know once again uh i get it like I, i'm like 80 percent in agreement with you right my my only hesitation with that is even with modern in there silver age is just not a new player friendly thing because of the silver age elements like you throw a person with modern in there 
sure they'll do maybe okay at, if they're a seasoned person. Like we were talking with Jason, he's like, I don't even know what I would play with Silver, and we're like, well, just play your modern team, sprinkle some trouble alerts on there, you're probably good. But yeah, Jason can handle it because he's a very seasoned and a very good player. But like new player saying, hey, here's Silver Age, play well, your modern team. You know what? Watch out for all these Silver Age, you know, retail, all of this other stuff. But I think like, to me, I think folks. Let me, go ahead, go ahead. Well, what I was trying to say is like to me. If I'm looking at it from WizKids' perspective, modern is how you attract the new people. Does not mean that Silver Age is like anti new people, but it is not there to to bring new people in. It's to get all the old players that left. It's to bring those people back. Bring the people that have those figures and they stopped playing when wonder woman 80 dropped because of the rules changes because they didn't like knockback damage is gone they didn't like certain things in it it's to get those players back because that is a large group that is a lot there's a lot of players that don't play anymore not just competitive but casually that maybe went to the wkos that that was their big event for the year they just don't play anymore and so for to me it's like silver age is there to foster the current competitive community say here's another format very good those modern figures you don't have to get rid of them they're still good Mm -hmm. let's get all those old players back too because if they come back and start playing silver age you bet they're going to start buying some modern product too because it's it's like crack right you get back into it you know i haven't bought hero clicks in 10 years oh I, i could play this old kc green lantern all right i'll play Oh, hey, this new KC Green Lantern looks pretty nice. I'm going to buy me some of this set. Like, that makes sense. That's their target audience. So, tailoring the new players, it's like the biggest questions we had when Silver Age was announced and then we started doing the Scott Porter event. And remember, he was trying to aim for more casual players. So, we had a very lengthy ban list. And a lot of players were like, well, this isn't real silver. It's similar concept where it's like, we were trying to tailor the new players, and the format just doesn't doesn't really jive for just brand new on the street. Doesn't mean that there's not new players that could jump in and thrive. It's just I don't really think that's Silver's target audience. I really don't think Silver should be going after those players. That's a whole nother discussion. Right. Um, I, I get worth it. I think I to- I get your point, right? But I would say I definitely played some new folks at rock cup last year was their first major event yeah so because scott porter event it was tailored toward it was cut back to handle that and they're sealed right like ultimately sealed is the format for new players 100 percent sealed is how you get new players in modern is the next step but sealed it's like hey you don't have to worry about what you're bringing we even got maps for you. You just bring, you just go pay thirty bucks, forty bucks, whatever. Get two boosters. Now you got to know how to build a team. But even then, you could probably fumble your way to have an okay day, right? So, like to me, Silver Age. I'm okay with the idea of Silver Age just being silver. I think it does add. It takes away the moniker that I hate that silver has of oh, it's just modern with a little bit of silver tied in. Like I hate that because well, it's, I, I, you, once you removed ID cards, yeah, it definitely became that. But it, sure. Once again, people forget silver's been around what a uh, year and some change to like not long, two years, year and a half. Like it hasn't been around that long, and it was always going to be a format that would continue to grow and grow and grow and grow and grow, and grow. like. Two years from now, we'll be sitting there debating, okay, is um, Scarab good in silver two years removed with all the new stuff that we've got now? Like, it's it's going to be a format that continues to grow. But going back to Brad's question, retail. How do you feel about retail in general? Just, even with the Mad Jim thing, so, is retail potentially too possible because of Mad Jim? No, retail is too powerful now because you got rid of ID cards. They got rid of ID cards. Well, no, so, they were even more powerful because of ID cards. No, because you Mr. could... Mr. Bop and Groot, Groot over there and drop in a Superman 
that dealt four damage or whatever. Yeah, like they I were mean, made better. I mean, five, but yeah. Um, so the problem is the problem with retail has always been you have to target the retail first, and with an ID card, you could send out your perplexed up Cyclops, and he could shoot the I shoot the retail, right. And then if he missed, he poofed. Mm -hmm. Right? That was your balance to retail. Now, this gargantuan surter that, that Sam used, if your main attacker goes up, tries to shoot him, and let's say you miss, missing happens, right? There's dice manipulation in silver. There's, you know, there's that Immortus guy. That was the pain in my ass during sealed, <laughs> right? Any number of things, right. right? Makes you miss. Guess what? Old Surter's coming for you. To whereas the ID card was able to shoot, see what happens, get off the map, right? You could keep it at bay. Now, Brad does tend to be right. Um, I tend to agree with Brad's statement, right? Um, retaliate retaliation is, or I guess, is question. Why should retaliation be in silver? It's super powerful now. So, how about this idea? Just came up with it. We have retaliators now. They're just not as good because it's power actions. Like you have to take an action. Sure. We have Surter. Now, it's the great value Surter. It's the Mega Bloks Surter. We don't have the Lego Surter. This is the We Have Surter at Home version, where he free action boops over and you have to make a close attack and take an action, and yet he's barely getting played. Sam played, or, played him, right? Uh, yeah, Sam, well, yeah I, don't, I don't think Sam played him. She tried. Uh, I thought so. She was going yeah, to... She, yeah, like no one plays Ymir or Surter. We have Retail. And there we even have Giganta and whatnot. Giganta is but, played, to be fair. I mean, not recently, but she has been. Right. What if you simply made all of the Retail power actions instead of free actions? Action economy <laughs> is very important. The, the I, I mean, yeah, to... I mean, yeah, I mean, if there was, you know some erratas or bands on it yeah sure like just just a, a blanket blanket errata across all retail figures you'd have to obviously name all the retail figures and just say where it says free in order to in in lieu of just straight banning all retail because retail does have a place it allows you to you know have to pay the price for overextending or something or it's a chance to recover if somehow my retail still survives it has its place, but free action retail is a little too much because you can free action boop over there like Dark Phoenix retail and then hit like just take a normal action afterwards. Yeah, like the, there's too much with that free action to to boop over. So if you made it a power action, they're still playable. I think Dark Phoenix is still playable. I think a lot of them are still playable, but they're just not. I don't feel like they're as oppressive because. Yeah, I now have less follow up action. Yeah, I mean, but we don't know whether or not that errata is coming or not or whatnot. I mean, no, but I mean, I think that I think you know, uh, WizKids listens to this show and and Howard and Aaron and all of them. You know, I I, I still talk to them, so right uh, the concepts that we say here, you know, it isn't going on deaf ears. We're not just talking to no one. Right, uh, it's throwing out ideas of hey, you know, concerns are brought up. Is it something that needs to be looked at? Especially, and I think the thing that puts it over the top in this instance is primarily Matt Jim being able to... This wouldn't even be a question if they closed that loophole. Like, if they just closed the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, giant and, like, colossal figures shouldn't be able to equip the power gem. Whoopsies. Because they can't. Matt Jim is, like, the only one that can make it happen. Well, Swap makes it happen sure um but it, it's not organic right like you have to kind of force it so 
I mean, if Hero Quest yeah. players are good at anything, it's forcing stuff into the rules. True. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I I agree with Brad and you at this point of... I don't think the question is, should they be allowed in the format? I think the question is, are they too strong for the format, and do they need to be well, watch the, the The problem is, is that you're continually chasing... Instead of just having a format that is powerful, right? Like, you know, Silver, you know, has some of its own bands and all that other stuff, right? I get that. And But instead of having a format that is powerful, you're now continually chasing your tail on the next most powerful thing that people bitch about. Instead, you could just have ID cards be legal. Okay, but... Take some of these other things off the ban list instead of just banning this. Now you gotta errata that. Now you gotta do this. Now you gotta do that. Just have the format be fi- uh, powerful and just let that be okay. But powerful does not equal fun to a lot of people. It Once again, this is a target audience. Bringing some of those people back. ID cards are frequently considered negative when it comes to enjoyability for a lot of players you are in the minority i like certain ids i think the problem is is that they're too flexible and there's too many good figures for ids if there's if ids just had a bunch of mediocre ones or there's issues about ids in general if they had made some changes to ids that got rid of some of the like I just said, forced aspect of it, like the fact that you could poof figures off. We're talking a different ID game. But we heard from a lot of people at Worlds that they were not interested in playing Silver because IDs were there. I get it. I get it. But now but now they're going to complain about all these other things. Guarantee you those same people are going to complain about, oh, Dark Phoenix and Surtur and, and whatever other thing comes out. It's just, there's always complaints about this stuff. And I'm not making fun of you folks. You have every right to complain. You know, don't come with your pitchforks at me. Whatever. Obviously, I like ID cards. Um, I think it's just Mad Jim, really. Like, I, no, I feel like... I think, I think that equipping, equipping a um, character... Or equipping a colossal or a giant doesn't doesn't change that. They're still just as good. There's Groot will still be just as played. Dark Phoenix will be just as played. None of, none of that's going to change. But uh, as a pl- as a player who's played a decent amount of silver, Groot with ID cards is way different than just Groot. Like I played through the Groot era. Era I played Groot. So when I started playing Silver. I was like, I know here's Groot. I know he's going to smack me, and I know I'm going to get some Walking Woods smacking me right after. But then you add in, oh, all these older than Silver Rage ID cards are back. So now you play Superman. Okay, so now this 20-point figure now has a lot more firepower to it. I get it. Now we're taking that away. Okay, that's fine. But now Groot has other things that he brings to the table because he's being equipped because of this one figure i can't like do anything about like it's just i I it's it's such a loophole i know but now you're chasing you know ids are gone now you're talking about chasing mad jim now you're talking about we're chasing id the retail figures i I, it's just never going to end and i get it i mean that obviously gives us something to talk about all the time but I, I mean, it's just, bleh, you know, just find, you know, I think, always find something to complain about. Well, I think my biggest concern with it is more so that it's so tied to one figure that creates this quote unquote loophole. Like, yes, I know you got swap, but swords don't honestly change that much. Uh, like you, to... you have to remember that you can swap Illuminati too and get, sure. and get, gems. okay, that's, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. I, I think it's because it's something that's also recent. Like, it's like now. Like, we have, it just happened like three weeks ago that this is now all a thing. To throw into Silver Age with everything else, it's just, it's, 
if it was just retail and you didn't have the mad gym i think honestly people would be accepting of it if there may be a few people a few figures they complain about groot dark phoenix like because i think groot was already on the watch list right or did he get removed i can't remember i don't um, remember like those pieces people yeah they're always going to be complaining but i don't think they would be complaining nearly as much as id cards but mad jim might set that over because being able to give somebody uh, one of the infinity gauntlets or something to have protection against whatever is yeah. it isn't that what the cap one is to get certain protections like i, I don't know it, it remains to be seen sure um i don't think retail i think retail's fine and silver it's just that loophole is what makes them go over the top yeah. And that kind of we kind of answered um what other elements need looked at for a rod or bands we know how dan feels nothing needs a rod or bands um, <laughs> the only one that i think maybe comes close is scarab he was watch listed and they said no because he has a short time left but obviously he doesn't have a short time left in silver age um in modern scarab is incredibly powerful yeah um, because everyone is equipped everyone and their grandma's equipped silver age with assignment rules even scarier yeah uh, because you could just go to town so with scarab i don't know if he needs banned maybe i don't know how you fix him that was the other problem right because like the champion clicks before the changes they couldn't figure out how to fix them like before WizKids did their watch list yeah. remember they did their own little one yeah yeah so Scarab for me is probably the closest because it, his power is so unique that in a world now where I can play a team that's like 200 points and I have 100 points of equipment and then I got one character that's like really, really hurting me. Yeah. Um, that's, a, that's a little spooky. He's probably the only one, besides obviously an errata or something to Mad Jim to stop the Colossal thing, that I'm I'm really concerned about. That's that's right. about it. Like I think I think silver's fine. Um you know, so uh I would say Matt Ventura forgot that Jason Weingard was already banned in silver. Um <laughs> and then yep. he asked, How close are we to seeing regular mission point builds win? Um uh, he says, how close are we seeing competitive mission point builds regularly at events? Uh, I don't think we're close enough yet. Not for the word regularly. I wouldn't use that adjective with it. I think we are significantly closer. But, because... but we're still far away? No, I don't think so. The closest we've ever gotten is obviously... Um, What's his nuts? Pot, not pile driver. The the other one. You wreck it, Ralph. Yeah, <laughs> the prime wrecker. I guess prime wrecker yeah. has been the closest, and then obviously Hella pre errata. Um, whatever. But I think the biggest changes that sets mission points up to be better is peacemaker. Uh, well, I did no way. Absolutely, I don't. Uh, you're you're sideline. You, is, no, I'm being you, for real. Being at sideline active, when you got ten or more mission points, ten isn't that difficult to get to if you've got the right team. You're most likely losing someone forty or more points at some point, right? So wait a minute. He, he comes when you gain one or more heal. So he only comes in off the sideline if you have ten and or more. Then you gain one. Mm -hmm. and then when you gain more yeah I don't know so I think my problem with mission points is is like the only time it, it becomes regularly valid in competitive play is when it's broken and then when it's broken it gets fixed um, because like it's your pathway to winning without interacting and uh, Wrecker's really good because you, you still have to interact with your opponent. Like you have to attack them, and you have to be oh, yeah, on the right. Ma you have to be on the right map, and you know all this other but that's stuff. A, that's inherently good 
game design. The game would be really bad if you had mission. No, points. I get it, but that, so that it, really good game design keeps it away from being regularly competitive. Because See, I, the most powerful figures that get played are figures that inherently don't have balanced game design. Sure. I, I, for you. <laughs> you play fi figures. You do that... too! Uh, I mean, sure, I guess. Do you think that like, Miss Kang... Do you think that Miss Kang is a balanced Hero Clips figure? Yes. As many times as mine died, yes. 100%. <laughs> She's reliant purely on hidden shape changes. And, and with tarot cards and everything out there now, yeah, she's probably one of the more balanced competitive pieces. She's still really good. But Did you never you, did you never KO a Chronal Echo when she was on her stop click? No, if she died, it's because she was she never got to her stop click. She it just either went through or I didn't have echoes. Now she only died to be fair three times. Right. One was very quickly to Isaac because I hit didn't hit a shape change, and the one time I got an echo, he was able to kill it with the tarot card. Like before I uh -oh. even like the, I put the, it on the, the field splash, and died. The splash thing. Yeah. But yeah, so like but even like Miss Kang, like I get I play stuff too, right? I mean I get that. I mean I played Saki. Like you're talking about like Miss Kang, yeah. Saki versus like an uncommon. And it's just a wildly different fifty points. Yeah, so, mission points. Mission points just takes a lot more. Um, like they inherently can't be broken because they're going to get fixed. Because yep, and but they take I a lot they're more. Still playable. They're still playable, but they take a lot more finesse. And finesse just isn't sustainable for the most part. That's that's. Uh, pr probably true um i think peacemaker is the one changer doesn't mean they set him up to like win consistently but it's enough to like he's better like he mm -hmm. helps because the one negative about mission points is a majority of the mission points unless some new one i didn't see relies on your opponent doing something for yeah. the most part like there's yeah. some uh, ultra on pim you just move people um pick up objects or whatever peacemakers literally he just he when he comes in later which sure he may not but when he comes in he just gives you one because he used prob like when yeah. you're at 10 you know that means okay i i am doing still my mission point thing peacemaker adds more like he's he's my oh no my mission point team got destroyed well, now I still can bring in another mission point person that can maybe bail me out. Yeah. That's the only reason I brought him brought him up. Yeah, no, I get it. Um, so that was that was Matt's question. I just don't think they're there with the adjective of regularly yet. Um, sure. So Emmanuel also asked, please touch on Mad Jim Jaspers. And, well, this is so how any character with free barrier elevates charge and super strength figures. Just don't have any free. Just don't have enough any free mm. barrier piece, right? Here, have a piece of candy. Here, here's a piece of candy. Go smack for two more damage. Go smack for two more damage. Sure. Nice. Yeah, I. The problem is, uh, Emmanuel. I just probably not a lot of instances you're doing that because I feel like a majority of the time you're you're using that one marker to actually block things like, well I feel he, like you're... he uses he makes two but yes yeah i the other caveat and obviously wizkid's making the change of super strength means we're getting a lot more super strength figures it's coming back we saw some obviously in batman like it's very interesting watching the subtle like they're you could see they're building up to this and well in advance because suddenly this power comes back like avengers forever we went from like a hey, like two or three figures a set has super strength, and most of them ended up being legacy for a while. To now Avengers Forever, you've got four, five, six, seven, eight figures that have super strength on top dial, right? And then Batman Team Up, I think was even more than that. Like 
Yeah, because you had Robot Man, Power Girl, Beast Boy, Martian Manhunter, Shaggy, Scrappy. Like, Scrappy coming in, him popping in with super strength, hitting you for five. Yep. So, yeah, that yep. set up with Mad Jim. Absolutely. Um, yeah. What remains to be seen is just, this is definitely a buff the super strength, mm-hmm. this change. It's just... How often are you going to have figures that can use it? We're so. How quickly can people change their opinions of Super Strength to start including characters that have it? Right. Because um, we we we've been popular. We've been saying for years now. Oh, it's just a charge piece. Yeah. Well, charge Super Strength piece isn't so bad anymore. Right. Well, yeah, it was. It was bad. It's just no longer. It's now not bad. Potentially. Um, so, uh, I see you mentioned in here a few times about the change from three to 400 and my answer is please no, just please, please stop. Don't, don't do that. Please don't. Yeah. So the concept, there's a, there's people that are curious about, you know, should this go with the 400, the concept being of rock limited a long time ago, very popular format for a while was 400 limited, um, the game for me personally the game is balanced around 300 yeah i understand the idea of 400 is that you've got your apocalypses your 300 275 goblin king you got those high point figures that sometimes you can't eat through but you just take it up to 400 now they've got 100 points of support to make them even harder to eat through yep so if the game was more balanced towards 400, I would say yes, but it's very balanced to 300. So I'm just, I'm not a fan. I can see why people would be, but yeah, I personally am just not a not a fan of the idea. I, you said it very well. Yeah, just even your well balanced 300 point team <clears throat> now has a hundred more points to deal with to 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 do shit with. The counter, your counter that you were building to, to counter their 275. Yeah. They're yeah. like, all right, well, I got this 100 points and stuff to counter it. Yep, so. you got it. Um, so uh, that answer is, let's see, Caleb. Uh, Chance McCall, does Clickstaff join the movement of making Stan, a- Stan Lee legal and silver? Um, I appreciate the respect for Stan the man, but uh, I, he's a, he's a, there's a couple of different ones, right? So... There's only one Stan Lee, right? Uh, yeah, the purple ringed one. I guess I'm looking at it. Uh, I thought there was one other one, but um, I, I, I de- no, I, I understand where you're coming from, but realistically, no. No chance. What should happen is they consider making him a legacy card. It's still a purple that... ringed figure. I doubt that that'll happen. I know, I know, yeah. but it. No, uh, it, it's also too hard to get. Like, I don't even know where I would even get one at this point. Yeah, you have to buy the pack, and I've never even bought the pack myself. It's, yeah, it's a DVD. I, I understand. Game. What would be better, honestly, Chance, better, is that someone wins the Hero Clicks for Huntington event and just make a new Stanley Pog of some sort. Yeah. And, or, or to just to commemorate them that way. That's what I would do. Um, all right. And then uh, we'll come back to that one real quick. Uh, come back to that one. Um, I have to just make sure there's nothing else in silver. Yeah, Paul Cote. Uh, I'd like you to talk about sidelines. Troublemakers alerts are so good that you probably want at least a few of them. Yes, that is correct. And the ID cards being gone means that your sideline is now freed up a little bit more. In silver, a little bit, yeah. Uh, um, does that lower? And his second part of his question is: Does that lower the value of swap teams or other teams that rely on the sideline area? Uh, no, not so much because typically, like one black Vulcan and one Grod or Brainiac is all you really have to have. Um. So yeah, you can... I I, ju- I just recently sold my second Brainiac because I sat here and thought about it, and I was like, I don't see myself playing two of any Trouble Alert anymore because yeah, I mean, there I or other. I think one of each type 
is a must have. I think Black yeah. Vulcan is a must play. Um in silver. That that penetrating poison after he pops out is just so good. Yeah, um, I think you can get away with troublemakers of just literally Brainiac, Grodd, and uh, those two, right? I, yeah, There's those two, right, yeah. So, like, I've got specific use cases where you'd want to include Lex on a build, but that's getting kind of down in the weeds. Um, but I, I think if you had to choose one, it's not even Brainiac. You just play Grodd, because Grodd is useful on nearly every map. Um, the out The outwit is what I'm thinking of. Sure. Being able to bring sure. in a 10 point outwit is huge. So, like, if you were sitting here saying, you know what, I'm wanting to get into Silver Age, I know Troublemakers, Trouble Alerts are big, you can probably get by with just Grod Brainiac for your Troublemakers and then Vulcan. Oh, who else would you have as a Trouble Alert? Uh, the Black Vulcan. Fire... No, just Black Vulcan just and. Black Vulcan. I think. Firestorm still holds up a little bit. Firestorm holds um, up, but he's like 40 points. He um, lost the added benefit. Of, well, no, he never had the plus two damage, but the plus two is still a thing with him, right? What do you mean? Uh, doesn't he get that perplex? I'd have to go back and uh, He does. Um, he does on click his check. Two, on click his, two. Yeah. yeah. But the problem is, is that Firestorm is 40 points, and... He's just not as good as the other ones. Um, I mean, Green Arrow is nice in a world of you know everybody being equipped. Um, but you're you're most likely equipped, so yeah, you are too. So yeah. uh, Samurai's fine for a budget version. He comes in with regular poison. Um, he also has Force Blast. Um, so. Um, that, so then my question that might that be question, that might be better in the new rules. That might be something we have to revisit after the new rules. But as of today, Vulcan, Brainiac, Grodd. So you're not even looking at any of the Btaz trouble alerts. I don't think so. No. Because you got. I mean, just quickly looking at them. Yep. Superman. Superman is meh. I mean, super strength. Sure. Whatever. Wonder Woman, I've always liked Wonder Woman. Having a leadership come in has been clutch for a lot of teams where mm -hmm. you're like, I lost my leadership, I lose my commish. Okay, luckily I could bring in Wonder Woman. She could tie some people up with her lasso, but I get my leadership back. That's mm -hmm. been clutch for me. Flash has always been a good one, but 10 for two, whatever. But Precision Strike Prop, always great. Green Lantern with the TK and the enhancement is great. Patchy Chief, no. Adam, absolutely no. Uh, though I guess you could argue he might be better than Superman for the super strength part because he's only 20 points. Mm -hmm. um, Firestorm for a while was better because he had the double target energy explosion and a prop. Right, Firestorm was the best for a long time. I mean, I played several of him on those builds because he had the sidestep energy explosion with prob and he was a flyer. So it just, that just made him better than Green Lantern um, at that point. Yeah. It's just, yeah, I, I mean, I see what you mean, giving up more points, because they're 30 points. 40. Um, 40 mean, points. In some cases. Some, yeah. But, you know, there probably is a case to be made. Like, I, you probably want, if you're building a silver team, two troublemakers, two trouble alerts, Sure, you could play two Black Vulcans if you really want to. Yeah, you do. But there, you really but there's, want to. But there's probably some use cases where you need, like if your team only ha relies on one TK or one leadership, you might want to put one of those other pieces in. And to be honest, they're not that expensive right now. Like for some of the BTAS yeah. trouble alerts, they're still 20 30 bucks maybe. But I, I don't think they're so good to the sense that you're, whole sideline is on them i think no your whole sideline is not on them it does i don't think it lowers the value of swap teams at all mm -hmm. but yeah i i, I will i will just i i appreciate going through them here alex but i think you just cemented my thoughts vulcan grod brainiac that's yeah. it yeah i mean yeah outside well, of outside of 
specific use cases, which you, which you went through very eloquently. So thanks. Your your your, mean, your specific use cases are relevant, but you only no. I think I think you I think you only include those specific use case ones after you've included Vulcan Grod Brainiac. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's this is really what's going into the fourth slot. If you've yeah, you've got those three. You don't want to get another Black Vulcan. I get it, pricey. And you're like, what else? I have this spot here, or I feel like I should have a spot. What else do I have? Yeah. But the big, big question for me is like, outside of trouble alerts, with IDs gone, what other sideline pieces are there? You've got some sideline active stuff, but I mean, you've you got know, swaps and. But besides um, swaps, right? Scrap, like the scrappy. Swap. So you got scrappy. If you're monster team, you play Deadpool. If you're a shield team, you play Coulson. Um, Every one of their grandma puts on uh, Sentinels and Scroll Spies, even though no one actually ever plays them. Destroyer. Destroyer, sure, absolutely. Anything else? Oh, they're probably forgetting. We're probably forgetting something. Uh, Uni mind blue flames. Fair. Don't forget, we're, we've got this new Batman set. Don't forget that there were some else world figures that did the. If this character's on your sideline, give a free action, swap them in. Remember that, like free from a, a green oracle. Yeah. 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 There were some of those in there that, you know, um sure. That that set is legal else worlds and whatnot. So don't forget that exists for like a pseudo swap. But it, it is interesting to like kind of go back through and think of, you know, what does go on. I just sideline. I just realized I'm just sitting here looking being forced to wear pants, my occasional weakness is what Black Vulcans thing is <laughs> yep yep and you know what like i never this is uh this is going to be a little bit uh philosophical of me this set came out at the start of the pandemic which is when a lot of folks including myself stopped wearing pants <laughs> because i've worked from home now for three years and mm -hmm. whenever i have to wear pants like it annoys me like if i have to wear jeans with a belt like i don't feel comfortable i feel out of place mm -hmm. so maybe we've all become a little bit of black vulcan the past three years yeah, it might be why you relate to him so much like it just yeah i i i share the dislike of pants at this point <clears throat> <laughs> Oh man. Yeah. Anyways. Um all right, so um uh Derek Lair, I don't know if we fully answered his question of are there previously ignored characters with super strength that the terrain change made you want to revisit? There are potentially hundreds. Right? There's thousands of us. Thousands. Yeah. Um, so, like, I think the big thing was, keep in mind, your pickup power pieces always, always get a buff when something like this happens. A.K.A. Sarkarian Iron Man. Yeah, right? A.K.A. Like yeah, just, yeah, just to say it out loud, right? Saki, right? I mean, I'm on this, I've been on the Saki train, right? Um, but maybe, like, some, like, low point pieces, potentially, that had super strength. Um, you know, they could be a thing. Um, but I mean, yeah, I'm literally looking through like modern age super strength figures, and there's 141 of them currently. Um, it's a bit some bigger ones, I would say, that have flown under the radar that have like been borderline okay. Um, is a lot from Avengers Forever, to be honest. Like, there's been some people actually like Winter Hulk because of being able to give poison to sure. People that like that's pretty good for seventy five. Century at fifty, he's got it. He's got hypersonic Ooh. super strength. You know who else has it? Who? House of X Juggernaut at one hundred and seventy five points. 
There you go. Who doesn't like to clap for seven? I like to clap for seven. Now, I assume Hypersonic will not work with Super Strength because it is a terrain action. Which yeah, I assume Hypersonic we assume won't so. let you do. Right. Uh, one other that I think goes under the radar a little bit is Little Monster. Um, little Monster is 100 points, so he's a little scary to play. But he does a lot... And he has super strength now. So now Ooh. he's getting kind of his own bump up to where he gets shot over there. He picks up a terrain marker. Now he's doing five damage. Yeah. And, and you could flurry. So flurry. Well, you, no, can't, you, gotta do two you can't flurry. You, you, you can't flurry right. with an object. Um, I mean, dad thing. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, it's definitely just a boost to figures that were already good. Right. Yeah. For sure. Uh, but yeah, Derek, like it's it's a whole new ball game, right? We don't we have to see some more of what the terrain's going to do. Is there a must play piece of terrain, right? Is there one that's just like, oh my gosh, this is so good, that sort of thing. Um, so, um, and it's right. gonna make a, it's gonna make us at click stop have to actually go back and look at our charge pieces, right? Uh, Ian Eagleston asked, "What is the figure from BTU that you've been building the on the most?" Uh, and then what about your current favorite ring? And I'm going to say my answer really quick so you don't get to steal it. Scrappy-Doo, because he goes on the sideline with Sakari and Iron Man. Um, he's, he's easily been my most built-around figure. So, That's a... I'm, Scrappy's a good one. I'm Because I'm writing him on the sideline. Um, <laughs> so, um, there's, there's quite a bit of tech with, like, Prime Beast Boy... Yeah. Bringing Lockjaw onto Celebrity with Deathstroke. Mm -hmm. So, like, um, Scarlet Witch has Mastermind, which is yep. really scary. Um, so, like, your Power Eraser piece is even harder to KO. Um, I saw yep. someone talking about that one on Facebook the other day. Um,. Dark side still is awful. Um, awfully good. Awfully, no, just yeah. I wished he was. Um. So, I don't know. I'd say between those two things that have been the top. What about you, Alex? Is there anything been tickling your pickle out of BTU this past couple weeks? Um. Obviously. Beast if Boy I was going to answer I, for Tyler. He would say world's finest. Yeah, I, I I would lean probably to. Mm, I I'd have to lean towards the death stroke. Like yeah, I I didn't go so far as the Beast Boy part. I'm more leaning towards the death stroke part. Where figuring out okay, is there anything? The problem is is I I've looked at. Batman team up, but not from building with pieces from it because I'm still on the Avenger train. Yeah. Um, Deathstroke, though, can add to my soldier team. So if I just dropped certain things, I could do that. Uh, like drop Gladiator or something. Right. Um, but Larflee's also is one that I've looked at. I, I do have him um, that I, I've looked at because we didn't mention it on the review, but we did last time about the, you know, dropping the constructs and getting them KO'd heals mm -hmm. him. So, But to be honest, I haven't really built too much because, you know, there's not a modern age event until PJ's event for a few months. So I'm kind of just uh, kind of just sitting to wait to see where the rules changes lead us, where Spider-Man leads us, because I just don't have a lot playing for right now. But I, I would lean Lara Fleas for me and, and Deathstroke because they built just... <laughs> Deathstroke just, like we mentioned before, Deathstroke just changes and adds so much with just the keyword cheat. Um, I am eager to really see and play around with some of the rings, though, to see how those go. Hey, Alex. So, yeah? Did you know that Death Metal mm -hmm. Wonder Woman also does keyword cheating? What? Tyler's not here, so we can pick on him. Tyler was not aware of that until recently. You know, the way you phrased that and the way you said it 
made me really like it it tingled something in my brain to make me think you were about to drop an ad like i don't know if i've listened to a lot of podcasts or something where you're like hey alex did you know yeah yeah did and you... speaking of that our friends at trill and toad have dark well, metal wonder woman for you know it's, it's I was actually expecting that well um well it's a good it's a good way because our friends at oxit have the hero clicks cafe there you go check the link in bio to join oxit and check out all the cool stuff that they have in the hero clicks cafe um i really wasn't intending on doing that on purpose until you brought that up but we did need to put our oxit plug in this episode so um so i would say those are the two big things for me um mcconnell lamar ask is batman prime good enough to you have you exclude destroyer or mad jim from your modern age build not for me no and um, it, it feels like you get a different answer from like tyler or jason maybe but they decided to not join today so they don't get to answer that is he good enough to have you exclude destroyer or mad jim so i have not been building with mad jim anyway but i also just played a team that didn't have either of those and i had emperor gladiator anyway so no not having destroyer mad jim isn't enough for me to not look at batman i will say to be a hundred percent honest you're not gonna like this dan destroyer might need a look at we've oh, why? I I, I, yeah i'm not gonna disagree with you the fact that it's just like and i don't know if we mentioned it i think did sam mention it last episode um if not we've talked about it how it's just horrendous how yeah i think she did talking about her matches where it's like if i target three people and they're all equipped and i hit and yeah. i still got to split up all my damage but you get three rolls on destroyer and then he comes out it's like that that just feels so strong like there's the i when they designed destroyer they had to have known equip equipments were changing with the assignment but like yeah. with assignment now where like everyone you're going to have more than 3 equipment cuz that's another change that people don't talk about is that like before you were pretty much maxed out at three unless your character started with it. Now you can go beyond. You can go plus ultra and go to like five or six if you really wanted to. Right. To, so that means like my whole team is rocking swords and equipment. So no matter what you do, you hit me and I'm going to bring destroyer out. Like most likely, unless yeah. I roll real bad. Yeah, that feels so bad for free. Yeah, throw my sideline for free. So. Yeah, I agree with you. We'll see more to more to come there. But I think the short answer for Alex and I McConnell is no. Um, and then what do you think will be the most competitive mystery card? Um, we also have one more question from Ian to answer, but um, it's the perplex one, right? Um. um the string of cat burglaries yeah that one's pretty good it I, it's hard to it's hard to really say which one is great until we really see what detective teams are out there that's really consistently yeah but i mean string of cat burglaries which which is which um uh, i'm sorry not which which is which um no, the what? Is, which one is it? They have the same thing on realms listed for which which is which and foul play and fun land. Whichever one is the shape change re-rolling one. Well, no, no. Which which is which is the opposing character uses shape change. You may re-roll the result. The result. But what, what's foul play and fun land? Friend char- friendly characters can use shape change. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, I guess those are... Either one of those is good. Um, yeah, which which is which is... Um, got it yeah so pretty pretty good but so like i don't think know, the, i don't think the man who laughs so the so like which which is the string of cat burglaries is perplex uh no that's the occupying hindering terrain one i i, I scratch that take that back um i don't think being occupying hindering terrain and hitting is consistent enough the ones where you use perplex can be 
So like which which is which, foul play in Funland, um, the chest of demons relies on your opponent too much, uh, having things. Um, no, is it? Because they, I mean, <laughs> it gives you like protected mystics and stuff. Yeah, but I'm I'm looking at that and I'm thinking that might be the most playable. Really? Because at three, you get plasticity. Giving ev- yeah, plasticity is. I mentioned in the last episode, plasticity is very strong. That's so true. being able to just be like, I'm yeeting out of here. I yeah. just got to make sure I don't roll a one for everybody. Yeah, that's Matt, true. Like all of my people gets it. That and you have that card built in to where they get all free movement. Like that's. That's pretty good. Like, that's and true. this one is just you have to use perplex to target an opposing character. That's that's pretty easy. Yeah. So that's true. That's true. That's uh, true. S- state it, once again, it really depends on detective, right? Like, if you have someone that can hit consistently, like a Venom Wolverine or something. Oh wait that a minute! Changes things. Wait a minute. During force constructions, you may include any number of mystery cards on your sideline. Yeah, you can have multiple, but you only get to put the clue token on um, one if they all have the same effect. So, like, if you have one that is you have to use perplex, and you do so, you can't put it on which which is which and foul play. And but if you have, you have to if you one. have six perplexes, you could get plasticity and shape change. Reroll the result. Uh yes, because you're doing three and three, so sure. Uh, keep that in your back pocket. Yeah, don't forget, guys. You can play more than one mystery. It's just they have uh, that they they're all unique, but you can include any number on your sideline. So you know we were talking about earlier Silver Age, right? Like, what do you put on your sideline? Don't forget these mystery cards, people. Like, mm-hmm, there's mm-hmm. probably more detectives in the in Silver Age than I haven't even looked at Silver Age detective to be honest. Um, there's probably probably some out there. Wait, does does what's his face have it? No, right. I don't like, know who uh, what's his face is. Ooh, Prime Batman does have detective. Old Prime Batman. Yeah, the good Prime Batman. Good Prime Batman has it. That's yeah. uh, that's that's pretty good. He's probably going to hit somebody. Yeah, and keep in mind, I think it's just... I don't know. I'll say this. Prime Batman can start with the exospecs on him. Yep. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and my best Tim the Toolman Taylor voice. Yeah, that's that's um that's that's tasty right there. No, well, that's more than tasty. It is absolutely freaking delicious. Speaking of delicious, Grandma's Cookies. Grandma's Cookies offers a delicious variety of homemade memories. I wish. With flavors like chocolate, peanut butter, and lemon pie, every Grandma's treat is baked with love. I absolutely wish we had a Grandma's Cookies. Hey, man, you just, we got to just throw these tags out there, and yeah, that one <laughs> that one clicks player who works at Gra- Frito-Lays is going to be like, I'm going to get them that deal. Yeah, absolutely. I would t- love a big brand membership, right? Like uh, Athletic Greens, uh, whichever one the earbuds one is. Hey, listen, listen, Frito Lay's man. For a game that doesn't have a lot of time to go get food in between matches, perfect time to be eating, snacking on some chips or some grandma's cookies. So, like, there's an avenue there. All right, to slide in. Just saying. That's true. All right, final thoughts, Alex. Uh, we've covered everything for today. Um, I mean, can't wait till Monday uh, to hear what the map thing is, and then I can't wait to hear what the powers and abilities and comprehensive changes and yeah. I mean, those changes are always exciting. I mean, I'll be excited to hear it unless it's something that's going to piss everybody off. <laughs> I'll still be excited if. Well, that's true. Yeah, that's true. If it pisses everybody off, then we have something to talk about. So, um, thanks everybody for listening to Click Stuff today. Talk to y'all in the next one. See ya.